Hi, my name is Lynn and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Nourish Your Crown, where we share information and resources to support you on your hair journey. So today we're going to learn some lessons from Priscilla Shire on hair. I've been following her for a while just in terms of her spiritual teachings and I've always been fascinated because she has beautiful hair and I always wondered if she ever talked about it, right? And very interested in not just the physical side of it necessarily, but convinced that there are some probably some spiritual principles that I could learn. And so during the pandemic, she posted a really long video. It's like an hour and a half. I think it was an Instagram video. I'll link it. To, I'll try to link it below. I think if I can find it again, but I found this video just a couple of weeks, a couple months ago, actually. And I just started to listen to it and pull spiritual practical lessons out. And that's what I'm going to share today. I'm going to share a couple of things that we can learn from Priscilla Shire lessons on hair. So get your beverage of choice. Today I'm drinking a latte and some water. So get your beverage of choice, buckle up and let's go. So I took some time to watch the video because I wanted to pull some key principles out, right? And thinking that it would be things that could help all of us who are on this journey. And I'm only scratching the surface. And the other thing to keep in mind is that I am looking at it through my lens, right? So when you look at it, if you choose to look at it, you're going to see probably maybe some similar things, but you're also going to see some very different things. So just keep in mind that as I talk about the things that I the things that I gleaned from the discussion. The other thing is to think about, she never talks about in this video about any type of internal issues. And so I want to be really clear. This is not a 10 steps to healthy hair by Priscilla Shire, as much as it is insight into some spiritual things that we could learn about the process um, that she went through and see how things might be applicable to us. So I want to very be very clear. She does not talk about alopecia necessarily. She doesn't talk about her having physical internal issues dealing with it. And at the same time, I still wanted to see what could I learn from her experience. So she starts out the video talking about just her hair journey from way back in the day, right? So I think she's in her 20s and she talks about how her hair was thin. She was losing hair. And so she met with someone, her stylist, and they did an examination of her hair and determined that essentially there wasn't anything wrong with her scalp. It was what she was doing with her hair after it came out of her scalp. And so she spends a lot of time talking about the beauty standards of at the time and the emphasis on relaxers and straight hair and how she felt like she was, you know, that was something that was a priority for her was having straight relaxed hair all the time. Um, and so the one thing that she said that was very interesting is she said um, that basically her hair was fine and the way that God designed her hair was fine. Um, and so it, the doctor basically was saying, what is your, what you're doing after your hair comes out of your scalp? Um, that's the problem. So her doctor tells her to stop relaxers. And at first she says, no, but then she had the thought like, well, why am I keep ignoring the doctor when they're telling me what I'm doing is causing damage? And she says, do I want straight hair that bad that I'm willing to damage my body? And what's wrong with my view of my body that I'm willing to do that? And so on her way home, she says she pulls off the highway, goes to the bookstore and picked up a whole bunch of books on black hair. And really that began the journey of her starting to understand herself, her hair, and what God says about her hair. She so. says that um, God gives us our lives and then sometimes we are the ones who damaged it. And this was specifically referring to her in terms of her um, what she was doing to her hair, right? So we've been given a gift and sometimes we are doing things that um, can hurt and sometimes there are things that can cause damage. Um, the next thing she talks about um, is she determined that she wanted to give back to God what she damaged. And that makes me think, you know, how can we apply that to us? I specifically remember when I was going through my situation a couple, just the first couple of years ago, and I just was like, I'm sorry. I know that for me, because again, my issue was dealing with in inflammation internally and inflammation on my scalp. There are some things that have that are kind of out of our control and there are some things that are in our control. I had made the determination at the time that I was like, okay, Laura, forgive me for not doing the best that I can with what you've given me in terms of this body and help me to do what I'm supposed to do to take care of it, right? 
And so this is in no way, I want you to be really, I want you to hear this very clearly with me. There is no, this is no judgment, right? This is not like we caused it or because sometimes there are autoimmune diseases, life happens, things happen that are out of our control. What I want to focus on are what are the things that are in our control, right? And so giving back to God the things that might, that we may have contributed to, right, is a, is a step. We don't like to always talk about that, but that I think is a lesson. And so no matter what the root cause, like regardless of what the cause is, I think one of the lessons we can learn is, is to give it back to him and ask him to heal and to repair, which I think many of us are doing. I've seen based upon the emails that I get, the um, the messages that I get. I mean, you, we are already doing that. But I think that's one thing that's really important is let's um, give back to him what is damaged, regardless of how it got damaged. Um, and let's see what he can do um, in the process. The other thing that I pulled out of her discussion was and when she talked about the beauty standards of the world. And yeah. the challenge become is when we're not accepting who we are and who we were made to be, right? And so one of the things that she talks about also is like accepting who God made you, accepting what he's made you to be, right? So be who you were made to be. We don't have to conform to the beauty standards of the world. You know, one of the things even dealing, you know, wearing short hair. I wore wigs and braids for years and I probably will continue to do so. But a lot of it was because I, there was, there was a seriously long time where I wasn't comfortable in super short hair. And it took me some time to get to the point where I felt comfortable in, um, in wearing super and wearing my TWA all the time. And some of it came, became a mindset shift when I was like, well, this is what I got. This is what I got. This way it goes out of my hair. This is what I got. Could I, could I jazz it up a little? Absolutely. But what I'm not going to do is walk around ashamed because of the way that my hair is right now. Right. So that's another lesson. So the next lesson, practical lesson is get an exam from a dermatologist to find out what's going on. She talks about going to her doctor who gave her instructions on what to do. And then she also talks about looking at old photos and seeing how as a child, she had really thick, healthy hair. And over time, her hair really kind of thinned out. And so by going to a doctor, the doctor, again, was able to help her identify what was going on. And so that's one of the key lessons. I've, I'm in a couple of groups on Facebook. I get vid, uh, requests through email all the time. I'm always going to recommend that you visit with a dermatologist and find a dermatologist that's going to um, listen to you that has a good reputation um, and you go looking for one until you find the right one. Never settle, right? Never settle for um, someone who doesn't really even look at your scalp for a physician that, you know, is lackadaisical or doesn't care about it. Find yourself a dermatologist because then you'll be able to figure out what you're even working with. I talk about this all the time. After I got my biopsy, that was when my doctor said, okay, yes, you have hair follicles and there's inflammation. So what we need to do is reduce the inflammation so the hair follicles can grow and flourish. Um, and so that was the that was the turning point for me. So I highly recommend getting to a dermatologist. I'm also going to recommend getting a biopsy um, because they'll let you know what you need to do. How many of you have gone to a dermatologist? leave a message below, maybe share your experience, because I think we all have very different experiences. And so um, share it with your experience, leave a comment below. What was your experience like? Was it good? Was it bad? Was it great? Do you have a referral um, for someone? So leave a comment. The next lesson is she talks about this, not just being a hair story, right? She talks about her experience being the way that God helped her to see areas where she lacked self-confidence, um, where her sense of significance may not have been deeply rooted in him and even her sense of beauty. And so I think it's okay to tap into some of the things that this these journeys, especially those of us dealing with alopecia, some of the emotions, some of the things that this experience might bring up, you know, for some of us. I know for me, my hair story was includes a lot of those things that she talked about. You know, um, from I've realized because of the alopecia, there were areas that I wasn't dealing with my um, stress in a healthy way. Um, I wasn't trusting God in all the areas that I could have been, even you know, even more. 
Um, and also that being comfortable with having short hair. I talked about that just a little while ago. And the other thing that it did in terms of it not just being a hair story was this journey is opening me up to learning more about the suffering of others. Um, it's learning more about the beauty in foods, the healing that's in food, and um, even the community of women in this channel. So this experience, it is not just a hair story. It is a hair story, but it's not just a hair story. And it's okay to think about the things that might be a little bit more deeper than um, you know our hair. The other lesson that she shares and she talks about is about comparison, right? And you know, it's okay to look at people to get encouraged. It's okay. Like I would love for you to watch all the videos that we're sharing in terms of um what our journeys look like in reading the comments and watching other people, but be really careful that we don't get caught in comparison because everybody's journey is so different. Um, I might meet someone or see someone on you know YouTube and they had a battle with alopecia and their hair grew back and never fell out again. That's not my story. Um, I have uh, bouts of sometimes where it's I've had an episode, then it grows back. Um, and so this has been a very different journey. And so I think it's important to, we can get inspiration from others, but we want to be really careful not to compare our journey and our experience with other people. Everybody's texture is different. The lengths are different. Everybody's journey is different, right? And so even the goal for this channel is really to provide information, resources, and support to help you. And you can go out and find even more you know, information um, to help you on your journey. And so the one thing she did also talk about was her process for hair care is pretty simple. She no she said no relaxers, no dyes, and she didn't use heat on her hair initially for about five years. She did have a product that she shared. I'll put a picture of it here. That was the only, I think, product that she mentioned that she says that she and her family use um, on their hair. I'll put a link to below because I actually did purchase it. Um, and I'm just, I'm just not consistent enough with using some products sometimes, or I can't say, yes, it's helped me or I know it hasn't. I've been using it. I'm just not consistent, especially on, I've been trying to use it on my edges a little bit, but that was the, I think that was the only product that she really talked about formally in the, in the present, in the session. So the other thing she talked about is protective styles. And I think because especially for those of us who are dealing with alopecia, there are so many different things that we can and should not do. So we have to be really careful about, you know, picking up certain patterns and activities in terms of our hair. So she said she kept her hair in twist for four to six weeks at a time and um, a protective style. And so I think there, I know I have seen some success in, back in the day when I would, you know, do some type of braids or things like that. And that was helpful as well. So I'm actually planning y'all to try to get some twists um, in the coming weeks, we'll see what my stylist can do with that. But what do you all use protective styles? Um, what styles do you use? Do you find that they've been helpful? Um, I feel like sometimes if we were to use them, and that could be a wig, that could be twists. But I feel like sometimes like I want to do it specifically because I'm like, I just don't feel like dealing with it. <laughs> like, even though it's super short, sometimes I just want to just go, which is why I might wear a wrap or something sometimes. So um, what protective styles did you all use um, and what ones have been most successful for you? The very end, nearing the end of the video, she talks about her stylist. She introduces her stylist and she and her stylist talk about gentle hair care, right? And I just, that just stood out to me, right? So just that sometimes I think too, we just, there's a lot going on. We're always moving, moving, moving. And I'm sure we probably could pick our hair hard or comb it hard. And there was just something about the way she talked about approaching hair with gentleness and tenderness. And it just resonated with me from a spiritual side, right? Because there's so much, again, there's so much going on and like, giving us the time to just slow down, which is why also it is good when you get to go to the hair salon and they just take their time and they're gentle and they're tender. So I think even in this journey, I think one of the lessons for us is just embracing the gentleness and tenderness in those types of moments, whether it's at the hair salon, whether we create moments or even if we're you know, combing our hair at night, just a reminder to be gentle, to be tender um, and enjoy the, that softness, right? And so at the very end of the video, 
she introduces her hairstylist, Whitney, who is considered her, I think her YouTube channel is The Growth Guru. And Whitney, I enjoyed hearing from her. And she talks about how her platform is healthy hair, but her ministry is self love and acceptance. And I really appreciate that. She talked about um, the spiritual connection to hair, right? And that so many of us have trauma and pain around our hair. And that is no different for those of us who are dealing with alopecia. Um, And one of the things that she said that I loved, she said every curl, every kink, every wave, everything in our hair that God knew what he was doing. And so one of the things that I wanted to encourage you is like, even in our loss, right? Even when we're losing the waves and the curls and the kinks, you know, that um, things are going to work out for our good. Um, And one of the things that Whitney said, which was kind of sobering, right? She says, you know, until you honor your hair, it will never reach its full potential. And so that made me start to think like, okay, so then what are the things, again, do I need to start doing? Do I need to stop doing? Do I need to keep doing just in terms of taking care of this gift that God has given? Um, And so that's, I guess, my question for you, right? So how are you on this journey? How are you honoring your hair? How do you um, even deal with of uh, seasons of loss, right? How are you navigating through that time? So so those are just a few of the lessons. I'm going to link to the video below so you have that. And I hope this was helpful. Hope it was encouraging. Um, I appreciate her taking the time to share this. I think that video is like an hour and a half long or two hours long. And so there's obviously a ton more thing, a lot more things that you can learn. I wanted to share some of the things that stood out to me in that video. So hope this content was helpful and encouraging and live well, live blessed, and I'll see you in the next video.